1987 Tauri Aquatic Festival, Day 1, Saturday, January 24th. I'm John Begley. Welcome to our coverage of day one of the Manning River Aquatic Carnival for 1987 from Taree. Joining us again is Graham Bailey from the St George Motorboat Club in Sydney. Graham, welcome to the coverage. Thank you very much, John. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. Good to have you, and we'll be looking forward to your uh, expert commentary throughout the day. But uh, you don't have to be an expert to see that these uh, river conditions are chopping up pretty well. Yes, unfortunately, that breeze has come in pretty strong, and uh, a lot of the uh, competitors are a little bit cautious about the water conditions, and. Uh, a few have decided to uh, keep their boats for uh, the next two days of the carnival uh, instead of damaging them today and uh, that's quite a wise move seeing we've got two big days of racing coming up here at Taree and I think uh, probably tomorrow's weather conditions should be a great improvement on today. Well let's hope so and uh, let's go to our racing right now. Bags up now Graham for the uh, unlimited blown scratch race the Pepsi Cola Saxby soft drink trophy and a hotly contested event this one. It is, John. This is the uh, the blown class. This is the supercharged engines, and uh, there's only one race, one boat in the event, which is Menace, uh, driven by Dennis Halls, that is not supercharged. There's a horsepower in the event, driven by Peter Smith, Blue Thunder, driven by Ricky Gagan, uh, Cob Cobra from Armadale, drilled, driven by Philip Wright. Uh, Cobra is capable of around about 130 mile an hour, and. Uh, I don't think he's, uh, he's running flat at the moment, but uh, he's uh, a very competitive driver. Russell Neville in Sydney, uh, the name Cobra, uh, many years ago, and uh, since Russell retired, uh, Clicky Wright has taken over that name, and uh, he's, uh, he's now racing, he's uh, worked by the three boat it is now. The Cobra definitely too good for the rest of the field in this event, and, uh, showing a clean pair of wheels going up that back straight. What can drivers do? Now we've got a, an event as competitive as this. What can owners and drivers do when one boat is just so far and above the rest of it? Or it seems to be at this stage. Spend more money. <laughs> <laughs> the old story, eh? <laughs> hey. Very simple, spend more money. A boat like Cobber, what sort of uh, dollars and cents are we talking about there, Graham? Uh, you'd be looking at uh, probably $40,000 tied up in the boat as it stands and uh, by the time you put uh, the spare parts and everything else with it that you've got to take with you to race meetings uh, you know you'll be up in excess of fifty thousand dollars well he's going to get a tiny bit back of that uh, that outlay yes, here he today is. Uh, the boat's performing very nicely and david's driving well and uh, the water conditions do suit these uh, these v-bottom uh, supercharged boats the surprise in the event was uh, was Menace, uh, Dennis Halls, uh, being a normally asp aspirated engine, um, performed very well to take second place in the event from uh, Pete Smith uh, at the Wheel of Horsepower. 